Hi SQL folks, for today's video, I am again using a question and answer format where the question or the case study or the scenario is put up in this video, which is part of the tutorial. And the answer to the question, the answer to the puzzle is in our members sec section. So if you uh, are keen for the answer, you can uh, become a member on our YouTube channel so that you have access to the members only list or you could take a premium membership on sqlmaestros.com and a lot of advanced content out there. Let's get down to the puzzle, to the scenario for uh, today's tutorial. This is about indexing strategy. And when you talk about indexing strategy, there are a couple of pieces that come to our mind. Like for example, when you design an index, which query or set of queries does the index really help? Uh, what are the attributes that you want to choose? Is it a single column index or a multi-column index? If it is a multi-column index, the order of columns are so critical. So I'm going to start the case study with a example and then move forward uh, and get down to uh, more details and specifics about the order of columns. And that's where the puzzle is. So I'm going to leave you uh, with a thought process out there as to you got to think why the optimizer is choosing a specific index and a specific order of columns. The answer to the question will be in the members only section. Let's get down to the demo. So we have this table here, sales order header. Let's run a simple select statement. There are two attributes that we are going to play with, the sales order ID, which is the uh, primary key. So there is a clustered index on sales order ID. And then we have another attribute, which is territory ID. Now, if you compare sales order ID and territory ID, sales order ID is primary key, so it is unique, which means one sales order ID per record in the table. So if there are about 31,465 records out there, there are 31,465 sales order IDs. Territory ID ranges from one to 10. So there's a lot of duplicate data out there. Now, let's turn on some metrics. Uh, we want to check specifically IO. Now we want to run this statement, select start from sales order header. When you run a simple select statement here, the optimizer really does not have to do uh, much work. It is simply you telling SQL Server, just give me all the data. So all it has to do is just go down to the, uh, uh, the data store, the storage and fetch all the pages. Simply, it is either a table scan or a clustered index scan. Because we have a clustered index on the table and sales order ID is the clustering key there, it is a simple clustered index scan. If we jump over to the messages tab, you will see that about 689 pages were read. Now you're scanning all the data pages. Now we all know and we have heard and we have seen that index seeks are supposed to be more efficient than index scans. If we change the query a bit, we say select start from sales order header where sales order ID is greater than one. I know greater than one seems to be a bit dummy, but I just did that to get the point across. Index seek are supposed to be more efficient than index scan. If you do something like this, now you have a predicate on sales order ID. Let's go and execute and jump over to the execution plan. SQL Server Optimizer now deploys a clustered index seek operation. If you jump over to the messages tab here, you will see that again, same amount of pages were read. We had to go to the data and scan all the pages again. Now here is a very common scenario, a classic example of an inefficient index seek operation. It happens uh, quite often in a multi-tenant environment. Now, you got to make your predicate more selective for the index seek to be efficient. Right now, the predicate is not selective enough. And it is a classic example of a multi-tenant environment. So what we could do is introduce a tenant here in our query. So we can modify the query by introducing territory ID. And this is where it, this will open up Pandora's box. The moment you add another attribute, now choices of indexes will play a huge role here. Maybe the clustered index that we already have may not be sufficient. Optimizer may be wanting new indexes. And if you look at the new index design options, you will have 
so many options at your disposal and this is where indexing strategy will come into picture. Okay, what are we trying to do now? By introducing the territory ID, you know the values range from 1 to 10, you are trying to make the query more selective. So if you simply, and this is just for the purpose of demonstration, I say sales order ID is greater than 1 and territory ID is equal to 1. Earlier, it was returning you all the data. Now, if I go and execute this, the interesting aspect here is the number of records now being returned are much lesser. It's about 4,500 rows compared to 30,000 rows. So the data that is being returned is less, but the data that is being scanned is still the same. So if you jump over to the messages tab, you can st still see logical reads 689 pages. Why so? Simply because if you jump over to the execution plan, you will see clustered index seek happening again, inefficient index seek. Also evident from the fact that if you take the cursor over here, you will see number of rows read 31465, all the data, but returned 4594. Doesn't matter whether it is four rows or 400 or 4000 rows, you're still touching all the data. You need a better index out here. And that is why SQL Server is recommending you an index. So if you look, there is a missing index hint. Right click and jump over to the missing index details. It tells you to create an index and most likely you're not going to go and create this index just because look at the include section. It tells you to just include the entire table as part of the index. You would not want to do something like this. And this is why people hate these uh, missing index hints. But what is interesting to note here is the uh, index definition, the choices of columns out there. So if you look at the index keys specifically, SQL Server is telling you to create this index on territory ID and sales order ID. It makes sense. It makes sense to have both of these attributes in the index definition as part of the non-clustered index because your query has both of these attributes and you're using an AND operator. It is important to note that there is a AND operator. If, if instead of AND you had an OR operator, things would have changed. But that's a different discussion altogether. Now that you have an AND operator and you have, you have two attributes as part of the predicate, it makes sense to have both these attributes. But here comes that big question, the order of columns. Why is SQL Server recommending you territory ID as the first attribute in this multi-column index? And why not sales order ID? First things first. Column one comma column two, is it the same as column two comma column one? And I am sure you know the answer. No, it's not the same. It makes a lot of difference which attribute or what is that left base subset mechanism? Why is SQL Server choosing or recommending territory ID to be the first attribute instead of sales order ID? Didn't you and I think that probably sales order ID should have been the first attribute? No, territory ID. Now. This is where I leave the question and the puzzle to you to solve why is SQL Server recommending territory ID as the first attribute instead of sales order ID. You have certain things to think about. Selectivity. So in that long video that I'm talking about, which is a 30 minute tutorial uh, as part of the members only list in the YouTube channel or as part of the SQL Maestro's premium membership on sqlmaestros.com, I discuss this in 30 minutes. Is it because of selectivity? So I explain selectivity in detail. And then if it is based on selectivity, fair enough. If not, what are the other choices then? Is it to do with operators? Is it to do with this relational operator or the equality operator? Do they play a role? Then I give you a couple of options here by changing the operators and then looking at what is SQL Server Optimizer really thinking. That tutorial of 30 minutes is something that you should watch. This will really open up your mind when you're designing and 
index and it is one of those really million things that we do when we design indexes indexing strategy indexes indexing is a combination of art and science and there is so much to discuss talk about and lot of trial and error and when you come to these conclusions these demonstrations this is what we keep doing all the time trial and error hopefully you have got some ideas here what we are trying to do but if you really want to explore more do watch that full video in the members only section or as part of the premium membership but if you know the answer and you have looked at the code and some hints here if you know the answer do put your thoughts down in the comments section share this video, uh, this video with your friends and colleagues and hopefully we all will have something new to learn happy sequel if you like the content give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos most importantly visit sequelmaestros.com there's a lot of sequel learning resources out there video courses master classes lab kits ebooks blogs hands on labs and a lot more follow us on twitter at the red sequel maestros and myself a underscore bunsel last but not the least do subscribe to our newsletters See you soon in another video. Goodbye.